Coming back up is this great new heresy episode and Pointless Products gave me the idea for this short how-to video. Here are the things I used to make my own oil washes. You really don't need expensive oil paints for this. You actually don't need them for anything at all as long as the cheap ones are finely pigmented. Make sure that the oils you want to use can be thinned with turpentine. I don't see the point in water soluble oils. In my opinion it's a contradiction. I bought this one litre bottle of turpentine in 2007 and I used it for mixing my washes as well as for cleaning my brushes. There are still 400 milliliters left so the 3 euros 99 were well spent. This isn't odorless turpentine and quite frankly I can't see the point in it either. There are fumes, no matter which turpentine you use and they aren't healthy so I prefer to be able to smell them. I never forgot to close the bottle and all the jar I used for cleaning my brushes. I probably would if I used the odorless stuff. I use turpentine for standard washes I need for all my vehicles. They last for a very long time and the quality doesn't change over the years. For washes I only need once for an ongoing project I use lighter fluid instead of turpentine. This kind of thinner evaporates within minutes so it can't be used for washes you mixed for standard weathering procedures. In order to mix my washes as precisely as possible I purchased a measuring glass. I added my own measurings because I need less than 10 milliliters of the oil paints I use for the washes. Last thing that's needed are bottles to store the washes. Light can affect the paint's quality so I use bottles from brown glass. You can get them for little money but of course you can also keep medicine bottles and clean them thoroughly like I do. If you use bottles from clear glass you should use tape to block out daylight. This is the wash I use for all vehicles with a dark base color. I use 3 parts black and 1 part brown amber oil. First thing to do is filling the glass with 45 milliliters of turpentine. Then I add the black oil till there are almost 50 milliliters in the glass. Finally the burnt amber is added. Then the wash is stirred thoroughly with a white brush with stiff bristles. And here's the result, an almost black dark brown. This wash is the reason why I don't use pre-shading. It does the job as post-shading. Another standard wash I use is mixed from burnt umber and burnt sienna. Although it looks like hot chocolate I wouldn't drink it. The result appears to be very thin and it actually is. I use this wash for lighter base colors like Dunkel Gelb or Desert Yellow. I guess you saw this before. It's Johannes Itten's color circle. I chose the colors that result from mixing the three base colors, red, blue and yellow. This can be used for most colors, but we work with colors that incorporate gray shades from white to black. The color circle is only of little use for us. Here I mix black and yellow. Any ideas what the resulting color may be? Here's the last call. No? It's olive drab. Not all greenish colors can be mixed from blue and yellow. Here we need black, so to speak the darkest gray. Let's do the same with three parts yellow and one part black. The result is light olive green. I'll show you why I didn't use white to achieve this color a little later. Now there's burnt umber mixed with yellow. Burnt umber is mixed from red, green and black. The result is khaki drab. With three parts yellow and one part burn umber we get light khaki. For acrylic washes I usually mark the bottle slit with a red permanent marker. This is just to show you how it works so I only use pure alcohol. If I really wanted to use these washes I would use 6 to 7 parts alcohol and 3 to 4 parts water. The water also serves as a retarder because the alcohol would evaporate too quickly and leave clearly visible edges and stains. 
Working with acrylic washes isn't as simple as you may think. It can be very difficult to reactivate them once they dry and that's why I prefer oil washes. Alcohol is a strong solvent and might damage the clear coat and even your base paint so please don't use pure alcohol for this. I will use olive drab as an example to talk about acrylic washes. The colors I use are the same as those I used for the oil wash. I only cleaned my paint stirrer in the glass and you can see that to me acrylics are strongly pigmented. After stirring up the black paint I cleaned the stirrer again and you can already see how the color changed into olive green. There are less than 0.5 ml paint in this glass. I measured the paints with my syringes. Here you see the olive drab wash. I want to talk about achieving lighter shades of this wash now. Please keep in mind that the base colors are black and yellow. First attempt is lightening the olive drab with white. I guess most people would do this. I'll use enough of the white paint to show the difference. What you see here appears to be a very light olive green, but it isn't. Let's do a couple of tests before I'll show you all the results in one pick. Since yellow is the light color in olive green, I'll use it to achieve a lighter shade now. Remember that it worked very well with oils. It looks very close to the light olive green oil wash, but there's a difference. This comes from the two different shades of yellow I used. The oil was lemon yellow, while this is rather banana yellow. Anyway, the result is much closer to olive green than what we saw before with white as lightning color. Yellow is the way to go, but what exactly does yellow mean? There are many different shades of yellow and even very light brown colors can be considered as yellow. Buff is a good example. It can be used to tone down generic yellow. Let's see what it does to my olive drab. It's somewhere between my first and my second attempt, but looks closer to the result I achieved with white. Desert Yellow. The name tells a story. Dunkel Gelb is slightly different, but both should turn my olive drab into a lighter olive green. We'll see if that's true in a couple of seconds. Is Flat Earth bright or better yellow enough to make for a light olive green? It seems to be a lighter color, but it isn't easy to tell what it is. To make sure we must look at the results. Olive drab and white make a completely different color. If you added more white or pale blue to it, you'd have the correct color for the interior of an M113. As I said before, this color that resulted from olive drab and yellow isn't the same we got from oils. It'll work very well for aircraft interior if it wasn't meant to be a wash. I'll add some white to the yellow before I mix it with the olive drab the next time. Strange enough, but buff shows the best result. The desert yellow made for a light khaki tone. The flat earth turned the olive drab into a dark earth color. Depending on what you want to achieve, you can add tiny amounts of white to the yellowish colors. By doing this, you'll get closer to olive green. Sometimes I can't understand why people buy the exact colors they need. My notoriously empty wallet and my pride as an old school model, I will never understand it. Before you switch off, please read the following. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you and yours, my friends. See you next year. That's all, folks.